Now, evolutionary biologist Richard Dawkins this year celebrates four milestone anniversaries, having released a book every 10 years since The Selfish Gene was published in 1976. Well, as well as his scientific research, Professor Dawkins is well known as a passionate and sometimes controversial advocate of atheism, mostly notable in his book The God Delusion. Well, I went to meet him to find out more about his views on religion and how he lost his faith as a child. Let's talk about you and your upbringing. Um, you were raised an Anglican. I went to Anglican schools. It was hard not to uh, in my time. Virtually all schools were. But that doesn't mean that my parents raised me Anglican. When did you stop believing in God? I realised at the age of about nine that there were lots of different religions and they couldn't all be right. Um, but then I carried on believing in some sort of deistic God, some sort of divine creator. And that disappeared when I finally understood Darwinism and the fact that you don't actually need any kind of designer whatsoever in order to explain the beauty, the elegance of life and the apparent design of life. Did Christianity mould you in any way, mould the person you are today? I think there's something rather decent about the Anglican religion in its modern form, not in history, of course, but, but in its modern form. It stands for a, a measure of tolerance, which I admire. Um, so I have a certain nostalgia for my cultural background, I suppose. Does it provide a moral code? No. Uh, I, it certainly doesn't provide a moral code. If it did, then, then we'd all be burning witches and executing people for breaking the Sabbath and that kind of thing. We do not get our morals from our, from our historic religion, not at all. And it's a very good thing too. Do you think religion now is a force for good or for evil? For evil on balance. Why? Um, well, just look at what's happening in the Middle East. Look at the, the appalling things that are done in the name mostly of Islam but also in Africa in the name of Christianity as well, in Burma in the name of Buddhism, uh, in India in the name of Hinduism. Um, there are appalling things going on in the name of religion, which of course is not to say that all individual members of those religions are doing evil things. The vast majority of them are not, but it only takes a minority, and the minority who are indoctrinated in childhood in a faith which does not require evidence, does not require justification, is never questioned. That is evil. It's evil to children and it causes evil when they grow up. So what do you think needs to be done when it comes to children being um, taught about atheism as well as religion? I think faith schools need to go, not the schools themselves, of course, but the tendency to tell children they belong to a particular faith, to have a school that is imbued with just one faith. Teach children about religion by all means. It's very important in history, very important in current politics. The Bible is very important in literature. But don't tell a child you are a Catholic child and this is what you believe. You would never dream of saying you are a logical positivist child or you are an existentialist child or you are a, a Keynesian child because your parents are. And yet in the case of religion we do that. We must stop labelling children with the beliefs of their parents. Let the children discover what their own beliefs are when they're old enough to do so. When you defend atheism, how closely do you come to attacking religion? Is there a line that shouldn't be crossed? Well, one line that certainly should not be crossed ever is the line of violence. And neither I nor any of my atheist colleagues ever do that. I think it's right to attack religion. I think it's right to attack any false beliefs, but also always to do it on intellectual grounds, always to do it using argument and evidence rather than insult. Is it inevitable that you will insult someone and hurt people? You may hurt people because they identify with their religion, which is a very unfortunate thing. I mean, you are not your religion. You are your own person. You are you. How do you cope with knowing that you have offended someone or hurt someone? I don't mind at all if, it, if, if it's simply their religion that causes them to be hurt. I would never hurt somebody by saying you've got an ugly face or something like that, but saying your religion is absurd, I'm quite happy to say that. I've noticed your voice is rather croaky. And, and I'm assuming this is after you've suffered a stroke earlier this year. Yes. How, how physically are you doing? I'm doing fine. My voice is really the main, th the main thing that I will have to worry about. Um, I, I can't sing, but that's not something I need to do. And when I talk, if I talk, after a while, my voice becomes increasingly croaky. So did you ever consider perhaps mortality or perhaps what lies beyond? Well, nothing lies beyond. Um, that never changed? Well, of course not. Why, why ever should it? 
I, I mean, I've, I've, I consider mortality from time to time. I, I expect we all do, um, but, but certainly nothing lies beyond. The Church of England urged people to pray for you. Did you appreciate that, or did you oh, think it was a waste of, of time? Um, when my colleague Daniel Dennett, the philosopher, was, was very ill with heart problems, he was told that people were praying for him. So he said, and did you also sacrifice a goat? So um, a waste of time or still a, a, a good token, a, a good gesture of kindness? I think any gesture of kindness is to be welcomed, yes. And after your stroke, doctors advised you to avoid controversy, to keep your stress levels down, I understand. Are you planning to follow their advice? Yes, as far as I can, yes. Are you taking a concerted effort to be more calm or, 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 or more measured? <laughs> Maybe a bit, yes. I think the family might appreciate it. Yes. Professor Richard Dawkins, thank you so much for talking thank to you. us on Sunday Morning Live. Thank you. Croaky voice or not, as a man who's never afraid to speak his mind.